Hi guys, I'm Redneck Computer Geek, sitting here with the gas-powered power wheel, and it's time to go and do the front tires and upgrade those. We just got the back tires in, but the problem is, I bought these, and they've got a flange piece that sticks out way further than what I need. So, I had to buy a tool because I wasn't going to sit there and do it with a Dremel tool, and doing it with a grinder like I did on the original tire upgrade video for the mud mowers probably wasn't the best idea because I need to cut it thinner this time. So I finally bought a 3 inch electric cutoff tool. It's a Chicago Electric. I also bought a set of, bla a set of cutoff discs for it off of Amazon. And this was $45 on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. And the blades were 15, uh, the cutoff discs, excuse me, were $15, also off of Amazon. I'll put a link for them, but after seeing what they look like in the package, I don't think I'll be purchasing them again. So I went down to my local AutoZone, I purchased their version of the 3 inch cutoff blades, uh, discs, and I will show you what those look like. But. On my back bench, I've got a bunch of different stuff that you may or may not end up running into to use this tool on. A couple of different types of bolts, a piece of exhaust to work with, um, some other stuff. So, let's take a look at this tool, unpacking it, and see what it does. Hi, so sitting here we've got a piece of cast iron pipe here. I was thinking if you were a carpenter, you might want to cut off the end or... If you were welding up a project, you might need to reach in, cut something off. This right here, it's an exhaust tip piece off of a Ford Ranger. And I was thinking you might have to reach up in in order to cut something like this. So we'll try cutting that piece off later. This here is an adjuster for height of a deck for an MTD lawn tractor. And if you're like me and you off-road lawn tractors, then you may be trying to just snip this off and get it the heck out of the way. So we'll try that. And this bolt here is actually the bumper mounting bolt from factory for a Ford Ranger. So we'll see if we can cut this off and how hard it is. But first of all, let's take a look at the tool. So, first of all, the box is ultra, ultra thin, but what's to be expected, it's considered a cheap tool. And the user's manual looks to be about five pages, which means it's actually only about a page and a half because the other half is in Chinese. And here's the tool. Okay. So... As usual, we have the usual Chicago electric colors. Not much you can say about that. Safety seems to actually hold there. That's good. So if we flip it, there we go. And, huh, I wonder what this is for. Might have to read directions. And then we look at the other end. Now it's definitely... I don't know. I would say I would say that it's about the same weight as a Gatorade bottle. It's not too heavy, but you wouldn't want to be up over your head for too long with it. And the end of it, the steel on it actually, I don't know, it's pretty decent. Yeah, it's pretty good quality. And so what do we got here? We have a lock wrench. I'm assuming that must be for the base. Yep. And an Allen. Now the Allen goes here. There it goes. Now Let's take a look at the disc that they provided. Here's the disc that they sent. Oh, make that disc. Woohoo! Alright, so it's your usual composite disc, nothing too major. It feels okay quality. Now, 
these are the discs that Amazon suggested. So we're going to pop those open. Oh wow, horrible difference. Definitely thinner. The Amazon Shark is most definitely thinner and you can actually see how jagged the edge lines are just out of package that's going to cause you to jump around while cutting and then those that one's got a pretty decent edge and then these ones came from AutoZone this is what AutoZone sells in their area definitely a little bit thinner than the Chicago disc but we've got a reinforced center so, max RPM 2500, 2500, and of course these will say it even though I don't trust it. Okay. So, I'm going to set this aside because it's only one disc and I don't know whether you can actually buy these, so I don't want to just use that one disc. What we're going to do is we're going to go with these, which are the ones you can buy at AutoZone, most, most other auto parts places, and we're going to try those for the test. So that just pops on there. Now this here is actually bezeled on one side if you've ever used these types of press washers. So make sure your bezel is going the right direction to press down and screw it in. Set that on. And there we are. Alright, so I'm going to find some safety goggles and we're going to put some stuff over here in the vise or maybe just hold it and see what happens. Alright, so we've got our goggles on and we're going to get those strapped in and see where we can go from here. Let's try our piece of cast iron pipe right off. That's a pretty decent middle ground as far as strength goes. Now I use these cast iron pipe handles for making these lead hammers. And they hold up pretty good, they're pretty strong. Let's see what happens. Okay, well that's the first thing that I've definitely noticed is that you have to be precision and not go too far in. The moment you get about here, it really starts to bind on the edge and pull you over. I'm going to flip this pipe because if we were working in a normal circumstance we'd be able to move around it. So we'll just nick off the rest of it here. so here we go there's the cut that's not too bad it's got a little bit of overlay but it is what it is first time using the tool so we're learning this here should just be mild steel for this hanger here so let's see if we can't cut this off and trying to do it in a way that you guys will be able to see 
Okay, here we go. I'm going to try and hold it in one hand, cut off tool in the other hand. So yet again, we got in about a little bit past 3 16 of an inch, and it really seems to be critical to hold it flat before it really tries to throw you. So I'm going to try it one more time, but I'm pretty sure that this is a case where you'd be better off to swap sides. So the problem that I'm running into here is that when you go to use the tool, you've got to flip this up and then press it down. And what I'm having to do is I'm is it takes a pretty decent amount of force. So I'm having to actually shift up as I'm using the tool to use my lower fingers down here. And I'm not sure whether it was originally designed to be used like this. But if you hold it down here and you use it, you end up with too much leverage on you up in this area, and it's throwing me. Alright. So, at this point, the next thing I was going to do was grab a bracket like this. As I said before, it's a bracket out of an MTD lawn tractor. So when you're building a lawn tractor for off-roading, the first thing you do obviously is you take the deck out and on these MTDs, these brackets are everywhere and they're just plain a big pain in the neck to get to. So a lot of people just cut them off and leave them hanging up in the side of the case. So let's see what this does. The other thing that I'm realizing is that the blade circulates in this direction and rather than a fine spree of sparks, like you get off a grinder, like a regular grinder, this thing spreads like a flamethrower of sparks. And it's very easy to catch them upside the face when you're not, if you lean in in order to look at it. So let's try to go and get the sparks going straight up and we'll go from there. So that went pretty good, but that went good because of my learning experience about the eighth inch to three sixteenths deep. I kept going back and forth and slowly grooving it down, which worked out okay. And here's what the cutoff wheel looks at this point. I really haven't done much to it. So we're just going to do the last part. Now the last part here we have is a bumper bolt. We're going to go with the assumption that we need to cut it off for whatever reason. So I'm going to take it at this point and drop it in here. Uh. 
and we're gonna see what we can do. It's about probably five eighths thick, and like I said, it's an original OEM bolt. We'll see how hard it is to cut. Now for this, I'm gonna actually use two hands, and one other thing I'll note is this is definitely warming up to the point I can feel it. It's not uncomfortable hot at this point, but definitely getting there. So, glasses on. We're gonna try and cut an angle down this side, and then an angle across, an angle across the top, and then we'll see what we can do from there. It's definitely that eighth inch to three sixteenths. Once you hit that point, it just, it binds. So we're gonna cut into it and then we're gonna try and cut the other side off. Okay, now I'm not going to grab this and take it out to show you guys because obviously that thing's going to be hot. So, that worked pretty good. I'm very impressed with the tool. Um, obviously it's a specialty tool. It's got its limitations, but when it's the right thing, it's going to be the right thing. It's kind of like a Dremel tool on steroids, and I like it. Have fun, guys.